Dan, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You did survive. You did. <laughs> I, I And it's funny, I didn't see that many deadly creatures uh, until I did. And then suddenly I saw like thousands of them. <laughs> In one was clip it, or like... I was like, was that one spider's yeah. nest? Like a thousand? Like oh, seriously. No, no. So, you know, like Australia full of deadly things. And like, yep. it's funny, like it's a caricature, but then sometimes you look around and you're like, oh yeah, like that's a deadly snake. And like and They are around. Um, and then when we got up <laughs> into the north of the country, so kind of like the top third has crocodiles and okay. the big, like people eating crocodiles. And you can basically see like dozens of them every day if you want to. Oh, like gosh. they are, you, you cannot go in the water of any variety because the crocodiles will eat you. Like a hundred percent guarantee. So, okay, two follow up questions to that. So, first of all, <laughs> a are there? Are I, I think I don't know if it was you, but I think somebody mentioned that there are crocodiles you can swim with that are not deadly. Freshwater crocodiles, maybe. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, question A, part two is how do you not be completely terrified of it being the one you know saltwater that made it in there, and. <laughs> Two, what kind of <laughs> preparation do you do for an excursion and experience like this? So to set the stage for the listeners, uh, Dan recently completed a uh, multi-month excursion. 18 months? 18, was it 18, 18 months? months. Yeah, 36,000 so, miles. <laughs> so quite a long travel around Australia. And as everybody knows, Australia has, you know, some less than friendly creatures um what so, yeah so let's start with the second question how do you how did you like we know people that have done you know crazy crazy like preparation classes for you know dealing with military dealing with poisonous animals dealing with that kind of stuff how did you get yourself set for this yeah well australia is kind of a funny one because it's just one country and so there's no border crossings there's no visas there's no language barriers there's no changing money there's no corrupt military and and so it's funny oh, it's like <laughs> yeah, i mean in theory there's no <laughs> every military is a little corrupt <laughs> you, you just don't have to deal with any of that so it's kind of strange like australia is actually like quite an easy place to go and have amazing overland adventures like in real remote desert landscapes, you we went 10 days without seeing another person or vehicle. Oh my 10 God. days? 10 yeah. days? Yeah, we drove the world's most remote four-wheel drive track, uh, the Canning Stock Route. It was incredible. But you, you can just like fly to Australia next week, like rent a, a Land Cruiser and drive that. And it's totally right there. It's actually very, very achievable and very doable. Um, so yeah, you, you raise a good point. Like first aid training is essential. And then obviously mm. you really got to think about how much water you bring and how much food and mm. be self-sufficient because we covered a thousand miles in 10 days and Jeez. there was nobody out there. And we were probably the last people for the year to drive the track. So mm. nobody was coming to help us. Wow. Do you worry more about fuel or, or water? Um, both, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> worry about Yes. <laughs> It's funny when you say that, because during my planning, I was thinking, you know, towards the end, like on day eight or whatever, if we realize we're running low on water, we can just start rationing it and be really careful and drink a little less and, and don't even have coffee or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're running out of fuel, there's nothing you can do. You yeah. can't ration <laughs> so, <well>. it. <laughs> right. Like, right. Yeah. So in a funny sense, fuel actually was more of a concern because if we ran out, that was it. We were hooped. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. So it, in terms of the animal thing, <laughs> this is like a, a questionable subject for a lot of people because a lot of people's reasons to not go exploring is animals. So did you have to do any like preemptive, like psychological training at least to say, okay, so if I'm, you know, in this area or vicinity, I can't go this far into the woods because, or the, you know, the, the bush because there's the potential of this. No, you don't do any training. Um, you, you talk to locals. There's enough other people getting around. And and, and I, I'm not so worried about like sharks and snakes and spiders because I, I grew up there and I kind of, I have a handle on how that works. But I was terrified of the crocodiles because I have zero experience. <laughs> I think they're evil. I don't like them at all. And so I genuinely, like every time we met someone who'd been up there, I was like, 
tell me everything about crocodiles. I like, <laughs> can we camp here? Can we do this? Can we like, that was I your want, catalyst. Yeah. I He's... wanted to know everything. Um, and it, and it's funny. Yeah. Like you were saying, there's, there's the deadly ones typically called saltwater crocodiles and they will categorically eat you and that's it. But then we have these ones called freshwater crocodiles and they're a little bit more like alligators. They're quite a bit smaller and they basically never attack people. It's sort of unheard of. Mm. And at first people were telling me like, oh yeah, you can go swimming with those. It's no problem. And I was like, hell no, hell no. <laughs> no, no, no part of that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like but I'm then it's so you. bizarre. You're there and it's like a hundred degrees every day and humid and dusty. And, you know, you've been on the road for months and months and months. And there's this perfect crystal clear swimming hole. And there's a crocodile at the far end of it in the water and you can see it and you're looking at it and other people get in the water and go swimming. So then you're like, I mean, it hasn't eaten them yet. I, I guess I'll just get in a little bit. <laughs> and then before me? you know it, that, that's how you wind up swimming with crocodiles. That's... You just always make sure one of them is closer to the croc than you are. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, what's the what's the joke? Like, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just got to be faster than the next fastest person. <laughs> yeah. And then it leads, what it is. It leads to these bizarre things where there's a sign, clear sign that says, warning, there are crocodiles in this water. And it has a picture of a crocodile, you know, with the big sharp teeth, like in the cartoon warning sign. <laughs> and then directly below it, it says like swimming at your own risk. And there's a picture, like the, the same cartoon picture of a person swimming. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, like, this, I don't, uh, okay, I'll go swimming then. We have that in America at, uh, in swimming pools, in like hotels, where it says no lifeguard, swim at your own risk. Not like active crocodiles. <laughs> that is not a thing that that we experience at least in the uh in the northern part of the states it's a very strange feeling and i honestly never believed that i would do it and then suddenly there i was swimming with crocodiles that's yeah so chris pulled up a picture of uh of you wading deep in the <laughs> gladiator have you have you uh encountered any wildlife while like actually like actively driving through a river or something Oh, no, I don't think I ever saw a fish or a crocodile or anything like that. We we tried. There's a couple of really famous river crossings up in the Northern Territory where it's extremely common as you're driving across, there will be crocodiles in the water like you could pretty much reach out and touch <laughs> them. And we, we drove across two or three of them, but we never actually saw any crocodiles. Um, but we spoke to people who were like, oh, yeah, when we were there, there was like 10 crocodiles right in the river. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. That is, like, you're like yeah. reasons not to get stuck in the middle of a river crossing usually it's like because you don't want the vehicle to flood because you don't want to get right. washed downstream <laughs> now you can just add because That's there's many crocodiles yeah. in the river oh no oh my gosh no the worst we get up here is like you get a frog in a floorboard or you know like maybe a lizard of some sort but nothing like that yeah that's yeah so so uh yeah, I mean, again, welcome back from Australia. And, you know, this really seems like it was a, a different adventure from the uh, the North-South Americas and the uh, the Africa trip. So, I mean, let's let's talk about Australia. I mean, what were your, like, high points, low points, the difficulties and, you know, best parts? Tell us everything. I mean, we're, we're all ears here. <laughs> I mean, there is so much to talk about. Um, it is, uh, and I'd never seen more than about 10% of the country. So I actually even didn't fully know what I was getting myself into. Um, and it is enormous. It's way bigger than I realized. And it kind of has everything. You know, I think oftentimes you see photos of the deserts or you see photos of the, the four wheel driving Chris was just showing, which is kind of way up in the Northeast corner, which was incredible. But as well as that, Australia has like old growth forests down in Tasmania. It has stunning beaches all the way around. It has like rock canyons. It has rainforest. It has mountains that get snow in the winter. So, so it's kind of amazing. If you travel around the whole country, you really do get to like see all of that all while you're still in the same country. So it's kind of like traveling in the US. You know, if you go coast to coast and north to south, the, the diversity is enormous. Mm -hmm. 